You got the you got the uh the quarter on, sir? No, no, it doesn't matter. I'm looking at it. Uh I'm doing minutes. I'm how brief they are. Okay, we like to since I don't my glasses. Well, get started. Get started. Seven oh two. Uh, Starting the London Planning Board meeting, uh, we called the board. They went through the, um, the agenda first. We have the approval of the agenda, approval of minutes, then the pending application, which is the RSU 21 school expansion, and then land use ordinance revisions. We review new land use ordinance format, and other business is the fire protection issue in the planning report. So. I should uh, roll call. Roll Mark call. Mark Hain. Bob Coon. John McGann. <coughs> Tom McGann. Admiral Wade Planner, Secretary. Yeah. <laughs> I should say right up front, I caught a cold yesterday, so hopefully well, you will understand what I'm saying. So stay back. <laughs> if we, if we'll, we'll leave you in the corner. Early, be we'll leave you in the corner. Okay. So let's do uh, approval of the agenda. Okay, so we'll now, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Approval of minutes. I haven't looked at them. All the school we just go here. Anybody look at it yet? Yep. I didn't see anything. Well, which one are we? September 10th. Uh, oh, September 10th. We have. We also have March 20th. March 20th. Okay. That's nice. Right. Uh, seven pages to read. I think uh, I would rather table it for now to move on. You guys want to spend fifteen minutes reading it? Did you have a chance to read it? Already? What? This is what I just got? September tenth. No, huh? I haven't either. No. So. Okay. I I agree with the table. September tenth. Okay. Second on that. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? We'll put the table that. Um, okay, we'll, we'll move on to that we have to do site walk uh, minutes for August 20th. Okay. okay, that's right, there's no separate minutes. Yep. Those are, that's just one page. Yeah, it's one page. Uh, let's see, do we have enough? That was the champagne one. Yeah. yeah. Bob, Marty. No. No, we don't have enough. No, so we have to change that. I'm waiting for that. I don't quorum on that, so we'll have to wait. I don't think we need a motion to that. No. We have to wait. Okay. All right, so we'll move on to um, pending applications. Item one is RSU 21 ML Day School Expansion, the plenary site plan pre application, which is the proposal to reconstruct ML Day School campus renovations of portions of the existing building. 24,045 square feet of building expansion and located, relocated parking and recreational facilities on a 9.59 acre parcel located on 16 Limerick Road, Map 17, Lot 25 in the R2 District. RSU 21 is the owner applicant and Frank Crabtree of Harvard Associates is the owner's agent. So, um, Yeah, but you can't see them yet. You're going with the other one. Okay. So if I give these to you, you're going to start looking at them. Yeah. That's for the next meeting. That's for the next meeting. This is the full application. All right. What, what the intent of this meeting, of course, is to review the site walk and if there was any data that the applicant needed to know in order to present his app, prepare his application from the site walk and waivers and concerns the plan board had. This is the opportunity for the planning board to uh, to notify him of that, so he can prepare his application accordingly. So for the flat the sidewalk, the majority of the stuff that wasn't there is in the application already. Well, well that reported we before. We did I, have, I, I just received it. Reported, so I have not gone through the checklist yet, but I'm assuming. Well, could you guys go over what um, any issues were? Sidewalk. 
Well, we, we looked at a couple of concerns. We looked at uh, sight distance for the entrance way. We also looked at the new location of the building. There's quite a drastic movement of the new portion of the building. Looked at parking, and uh, we had some questions about each one of those, and they uh, apparently have been already addressed by the applicant. But, you know, we haven't seen the new information yet. But also, it, it seems, well septic and lighting. Yeah, well septic and lighting and all of that, right. So everything seems to be in order. With the uh, site this met, that would be one of my questions. Uh, how was that uh, from the west? Yeah, the area <coughs> on the edge. It's supposed to be a study in the application. Okay. <coughs> yeah, so I think the, the applicant was, was preemptive in their approach. To expedite right. the process. That was our intent. So, you know, I personally, yeah. I have I have no concerns uh, that resulted from the site walk. Site walk, site walk was in very informative. Yes, it was. Yeah, can have anything to uh, to sh add to that discussion? With the uh, no, I think uh, you know, during the site walk we uh, showed the uh, board the location of the new wing. Uh, I have earlier we have had the application, full application addressing hopefully everything on your checklist, uh, including the stormwater, lighting, um, site distance, uh, parking, uh, water, septic, I believe, you know, just about everything we had in the, in the lighting. So um, hopefully at the next meeting you'll be able to review that and determine it. Is there anything else that you need for information? But, uh, we've been working on design the last few weeks. I think we've got a fairly complete package for you to do. During, during the during the site clock, to show us where a new bump bow is that's coming in and that's in the new plan. Yeah, we is have artificial elevations and floor plans. And is there, when we're reviewing that, I usually match that with the other and see what is there any other changes other than that? It's very small changes in the building. What you had saw earlier was what we bring brought to the referendum back in June. Mm -hmm. It was a basic concept that went back to probably January of this year for, 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 for pricing. Uh, since then, we've kind of worked on tweaking that a little bit and how that wants to lay out. And that's where that one little door entrance got kind of brought into that very there's not any really substantial changes to building size, shape, or location from the referendum. It's just some minor adjustments. And you know, the architects are still in that process of working the floor plan and making it work uh, from the concept to the actual uh, needs of the school. So there's a little bit of moving of walls and stuff and stuff. But the, the outside of the building is essentially the same. And uh, we had uh, mentioned fact had brought it up on the site one as far as core samples of the new location. We have and you have that, right? Geotech reports and we uh, uh, some soils information and borings were included in the packet. But well, we have they're already in the packet. Okay. I believe so. Yes, because we don't want to sit, make the same mistake twice, obviously. No, no, we've uh, no long before we've been here, we spent the last two years doing extensive testing evaluation of where the building wants to go. That's why the building is towards Limerick Road like it is, because that's where the boring showed the soils uh, most support the building. As we go towards the ball fields, it gets um, progressively worse. And when the C and D wings, the far ends of them are the sinking the most, that's where the weakest soils are. Well, we thank you very much for marking it out very clearly. It was it was a good sidewalk. It gave us a very good idea. Well, thank you. Good. All right. I'm just curious about the uh, septic and the, the well. I, I didn't I didn't notice anything changing from last the plans from two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. will, will that be moving the septic? No, the septic is still out in the ball fields and that's yeah. staying. That's been evaluated by Frick Associates and we found acceptable um, function. So yeah. 
septic system's good. Um, the well has been tested and just this past summer has been up, the water system has been upgraded. So uh, there's always the ongoing uh, operation and maintenance of that well system for it is a public water supply. Right, but you said it's just been upgraded. Just this past August, I believe, right, Tim? Right, and it's, it's, uh, we just changed out the arsenic filters, and the, it is monitored every six weeks by, uh, by cable, like water. Yeah, that, that came up during our site walk as well. Okay, so not, there's really no uh, plan of changing right. that at all. Okay. Uh, I mean, the, you know, a recent change was you know the addition of sprinklers. So the whole the new building, the entire building, will be sprinkled, where this building is not. That be a pressurized system, or is it going to be tapped into the well? There, it's good. If we've got um, out in the front lawn, there, there's some tanks. I think. Oh, systems. Cisterns. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Fifteen thousand gallons of water out there. So yeah, no, it'll. There's a pump that that'll pressurize when it goes on. If needed. If needed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll never be needed. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, again, uh, that's the. The new A and B wing, the existing A and B wings are sprinkled, and the new wings are going to extend that system, so it's designed for the full building. So, do we have to? We, we have to decide whether the application is complete. Or not. No, 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 we, we didn't. We, no, no. we don't. Have All you have to do is just mm -hmm. tell the applicant. You know, the concerns, they said they've addressed in this and say, great, we'll review it. Shall we change That's the one we have to decide is correct. That's correct. That's right. Okay. 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 So so it's uh it's just basically yeah, move so on to the to the next week. In two weeks uh, we'll be uh, this will be on the agenda. Okay. Well so you did that in between the site walk and seven o'clock and <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're, they're <laughs> amazing response yeah. right. <laughs> uh, I dropped off the tad uh, was it three thirty this set? Yeah. Well, so I, I will make a motion that we uh, we find that the board finds that the applicant has addressed our concerns and we're ready to see the application. Okay, good. Any second on that? Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? None opposed? Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. See you in two weeks. See you in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. It's three weeks. Three weeks. Oh, okay. yeah, sorry. Happy reading. Thank Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, we like to read them. Too. <laughs> there you go. We like Thank to read them. Thank you. See you later. Long day. So, before we forget, let's don't read them. Not right now. Not right now. No, no, this is bedtime. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, put you, you right to you've sleep. You've got the small map. You've got the small maps. They, I've got the one. And the full set that's this big. All the maps, all pleasant is the whole. So I think so. Alright, so we'll hold off any discussion of any of them. And we'll move on to land use ordinance revision. Item one, the only item is the review of new land use ordinance format. Reorganization of districts and format changes. Well, what, what I propose is that Ted just walk us through this quickly and then uh, we have a chance to digest it until our next meeting because just looking at it, we can't go, we can't make any decisions. The objective of this is to get the existing ordinance, or the one that was passed in June, that modified ordinance, get it all into the new format. And uh, a lot of it's been done, not all of it has been done, because it's uh, it's, it's being married with the, you know, I've been working on a new format for a long time, we need a lot, a lot of new language, and as we agree, what we're going to do is we're going to first get everything in the existing ordinance into the new format. And then when we want to make changes, you know, to new two districts into performance standards and so forth, it'll be in the new format. There will be less of a concern that they're changing the format and they're making major changes and there'll be a, there's a, basically a security issue or a concern of, of that citizens might have that there might be too much going on.
and they, they might not follow some of that. So not your good. citizens. It's not your <laughs> citizens. It's the board too. Right. And, you know, and, and, and it's a legitimate thing. If we go in right. a step process, uh, it would certainly make it uh, easier for us to also you know, look over our work and make sure we don't make yeah. errors. Um, and I think the intent is, it was the original intent that when we get this done, then we'll take the selectmen and maybe ask them for a special town meeting to go over it so that it'll be passed and then we can work on the, the stuff that the comp planning committee got passed in, in, um, in June, which is the residential districts. And that's going to be a big task and it would be good to get this out of the way and uh, in place and then go right into the, uh, and start working on the residential districts. And some of the performance standards, I mean, you know, frankly speaking, we recognize the last time that we had a lot of new conditional uses that don't have performance standards. We have to come up with some performance standards on those. And then the board's mentioned, and we have a little tick on the list of things that we want to change in some of the performance standards. They're specific to conditional uses. Um, so this is, this is rough, but this is a good start. The thing that's looking fairly good so far is uh, chapters one, uh, all the way through up to the performance standards. The performance standards aren't really hard. It's the formatting is the problem. I've got some real serious formatting problems in there. Um, but the performance standards, nothing new in there. It's just a new arrangement of the performance standards. I've got some reserve sections for new sections, like fire protection. We don't have fire protection, general performance standards. That will not be in here. It will be a reserve. And when you see things you don't recognize, like fire protection, it's actually going to say reserve. So that section 5-7 will now be reserved for fire protection when we do it. Okay? That's a good idea. Yeah. And you'll see building and structures in the front, you know, the first one. Uh, that's reserved. That gives us the, to discuss a few things on buildings that we don't have um, that we need to put in. Um, there's some messiness in, in uh, item number four when it gets down. You'll, you'll notice, uh, well, let me just finish this. But these, and I, I've arranged these alphabetically because um, people look for these things in an alphabetical way. They say, oh, we need to find, us, uh, we need to find uh, soil and erosion control rather than hunting through it. It's much easier to find it when it's alphabetical. So that's why it's out of order from what we have right now. Uh, the other thing, that's, that's really highlighted in this uh, are, I've pulled out some that are, are key hot button uh, performance standards that people don't find that are buried in the ordinance. Uh, for instance, private ways is buried in, in uh, driveway and, and road construction. That's highlighted as its own section so people can find the private ways instead of hunting for it. Another good one is estate lots. Remember, we thought we'd get a, a whole bunch of the people taking advantage of the state lots, and we've had like two in five years of taking care of the state lots because they don't know about it. So now it's out there, and, and it's it's in the table of contents. It it loudly proclaims itself, hey, and my immediate reaction is, what the heck is a state lot? What is this nonsense? You read it, and suddenly suddenly might have some uh, some thoughts might cross your mind. Say, wow, well, there's here's a different way I can develop my back land. In a way that's more economical. For um, otherwise, all the rest of the stuff is pretty much the same. The same standards. Um, there's no new ones really, except for the ones that I've, I've, I've established as reserve lines. Uh, four, going back backwards, and the four general provisions and conformance. This is kind of a messy uh, chapter. Something buildings and structures might take care of, but for the moment. Um, it's got a lot of what I call Bob's landmines in it. We all know what those are. Those are little footnotes in the land use table. It's also that floating section 63, which which basically is after the table and has a lot of. It's sort of like a, a junk drawer in your kitchen. It's got all sorts of things in there. It's got you know what you have to do for a private way, what your setbacks are for wetlands. Oh, uh, you can reduce your frontage on the cul-de-sac, you can reduce your frontage on a non-arterial road. It's just a mishmash. Nobody ever finds that stuff. So we've kind of highlighted that in, in section four, which is general provisions and conformance. And, it, and you see street access required. That was the famous, famous one you've been appealed on twice. 
uh, principal residential structures has been there, but it's now its own section instead of being, uh, being uh, buried as it was before. Uh, provisions for reduced lot dimensions. That has all of those, those special uh, provisions we have, like the 75-foot frontage on a cul-de-sac, 200-foot frontage instead of 250-foot uh, on a non-arterial road. 50-foot setback instead of a 75-foot setback on a non-arterial road. These are things that people don't know about. We have to show it to them. Now it's at least in a place where they, if they're looking for, 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 for a, uh, as it said, uh, reduced lot dimension, if they're looking at spread any special provisions for reduced reduce lot dimension, at least now there's a chapter they can go to uh, and find it. Oh, even the, agro, even the silo, the, the requirement that there are no silo uh, heights but there's 45 foot height for uh, for the agricultural um, building, and we can put that in every residential district and every business district. But I think it might be just easier to keep it there in that one little package that says, "This is the place you go if you want to see if you can make reductions on lot sizes and lot dimensions." Um, mandatory cluster subdivision has always been a uh, tripwire. Uh, I have, and maybe this is for 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 the developer's benefit, but it, it's also for, for private citizens because they come in and they do subdivision layouts and they come in to, to talk to us about it and say, oh no, you've got four. You have to do automatic cluster. They've already spent money on doing a large lot subdivision. Now, that may, that will probably, that may change when we deal with the residential stuff we were talking about. When we get into the residential districts and look at what the, uh, uh, the complaint can be come up with for Making variable, variable uses based on acreage. Um, when we get into that whole topic, some of that may just disappear. That may disappear, or it may just stay. But at least it's in a place where it's not buried. Uh, also, the, the public utility structures. Um, you know, when we write a public utility, um, the performance standard. Because right now we have the conditional use public utilities are conditional use, but we have no standards for that. So now we can, when we do that, we can probably pull that out of there and put it in there. But right now, it's highlighted, so it's no longer, as I said, buried. Um, I combined the, the establishment of zoning districts and the, uh, the official land use map into one chapter. There were two small chapters, and I thought it was combined. We need to have separate ones. Uh, I, I had one question on sure. that section in section two. Sure. And the one that you passed out today, uh, the establishment of districts, the map, and the boundaries. Yep. We used to also have the interpretation of the district boundaries, how we would do that. Is there a reason that that has gone away? Did I cut instead of paste? I don't know. <laughs> but that, that, was a, that, that was one of Changes the... Changes the official replacement of the official land use map and availability. Huh. Well, we can want to have a, a, a well, verbal take it, huh? description of, of the boundaries. Yeah, we have a verbal description of the boundaries, which we're going to basically well, eventually get rid of. But that's in the back. Yeah, that would be tough because you're it's following the property. It's following the lot lines. You have to mention every single property line. No, if you saw how I did it in the um, in the revised one, it's not in this package yet. We haven't got, you know, I, I didn't print you out anything past conditional use. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to put that. We could fold that into here, but it's going to make a big, fat, upfront item. Yeah. Um, we can do it one of three ways. I mean, one way we could do it is is to do it, keep it in the back as an appendix. Because remember, what Leah basically said is that the map is the law, not the description. Description is secondary to the map. Well, yeah, oh, yeah that's the law. That's that's well, that's what the case law is. It's not, yeah. the, it's not the law; it's the case law. Yeah. So the map prevails. Um, so the, the description is less important. You remember what we did last time is we said as shown on the map. Yeah. So that's how we're going to be probably doing it. So we either keep it as an appendix in the back, we put it in with, this, with the zoning map, and have each description of where that zone is, or else we put it in the chapters, in the chapter heading. 
So in each individual zones, remember we have a we have a section now for each individual zone. So you might have this the, the yeah, you might put it in every single zone, it might get a little tough on R1 because R1 does have a lot of verbal descriptions in it, unless it's yeah. just to show the map. That that would just be too many pages to even get started. The only the, the only way I could see that the uh, map takes precedence is if you have a relatively accurate GIS type map, which I don't think we have that published on our website. Do we don't have our GIS map? If they're working on it right now, our biggest problem with that map. In fact, I've been with Tom to go over his his layers. We have a shoreline zoning. But we, we have to do, but we know we don't have that publisher. Publish right? We don't have the publish. We had the little maps published, right? Um, which is which is legal. Because I I would feel comfortable saying you know refer to the map, but we had a detailed map that was available via the internet. And very honestly, there's a number of towns that have oh, instead yeah, of the big yeah, map, they right. put in the little maps. In fact, Freeport and Cumberland just stopped. They have both now, but they used to have nothing but the little. With so a each, zone, doing it. each zone with a separate map, that we mean by... Well, you can zoom in. Yeah, on. yeah it's a little... A little you, map, uh, what's that mean? Well, it's, uh, it's the maps that we've presented to the town. Oh, yeah, they, those maps. Um, right now, what because the database for the GIS system yeah. now is so antiquated yeah. and so off, really basically I had to call in a consultant who's revamping it right now. He's resolving, he goes back to 3-2. GI Art View 3.2, and there's, there's these huge breaches in the data, and the lines are very far apart, and they, they're just not resolving. And so he's had to rebuild uh, our basic database because it's just old. Yeah. And there's a lot of yeah. errors in it. So he's it. it to this, he's he's rebuilding it to the new standard. Yeah. That way he's doing it in 10, in the GIS 10, which I haven't purchased yet, but we're going to work on that. And that, and that can be posted up and made available for viewers so you can zoom in on it. Zooming in, yeah. And, and, and want to it. we can do both. And I might try both. I'm going to say, I have many more money to resolve this. The more, you do, the more you do, the more you got to update. That's, yeah. That's true. Well, That's true. But also, the thing that makes it a little easier this time is, yeah, it's not the easy thing. You can plug a, a query into your GIS and says draw, basically draw. Uh, the, the lot, draw the zone line 250 feet from the edge of, of X road, you know, and give the polygon number. And it'll do it. It'll do it automatically on the map. But now it's following pretty much property lines wherever possible, and those should stay pretty uniform. Um, and they're also easier for people to, uh, to recognize. Uh, you know, a lot of people come in and ask about the AR district, for instance, and uh, they really like the property line. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, so let's say somebody has a has a property on, uh, on you know, DB1 and, or DB2 and an R, you know, we got DB2 and then on the back side is an R3. Right. What if somebody buys all of that and makes it one lot? How is that defined now? Because on the map, it's no longer a, a property. Right. Right? Right. But it's on the, it, it's, that is, the map is as shown as the property was shown at that time. Yeah, so it says historically, as it is historically. So, right, so you'd have to go, somebody would have to go back and figure out right. where those yeah. property lines are. Yeah, I, I had the same question, because I think over time, 50 years ago, it, people would wonder why were those lines yeah. going there. They'll change. But I, I don't yeah. hope they come on. 500 feet back, they'll well, probably I mean, never change, you know, but but we went with the prop lines because it's easier for the property owners right now to, to know they're in this zone or that zone. You know, you remember when they yeah. split the zone, it's, it's really challenging. But the, the owner can come in and petition to have the yeah. line changed around their lot. You know? yeah. so those those lines will change over time. I don't see them. You know. Yeah, they're going to. Yeah. But it would be so easy. The problem is we have so many kids right now, zigzag change. By the way, well, it might be, but remember also we've had three requests for zone changes on a lot because the zoning had cut up the lot so badly it was unusable. Right, yeah. And and uh, and Champagne was or that Champagne lot is on that lot that was unusable because of the zone zone lot. So 
I mean, we just took a piece of land that was always going to be vacant, and now it's it's got a, a business use on it. So that was a good positive. So it'll always be good. There's always going to be. Yeah, and you, you may run into that again, but it probably won't be as bad as what it is today. Well, you know, it, it's not that it's bad. It, it's very convenient for the map maker because the query is very simple that you put in. It draws that line, thousand feet. You know, the famous thousand right, feet. Right, right. Very easy. Um, although the map was not drawn. Oh, <laughs> but, but uh, there's a real disparity the between the map and the description. Change over time, so right. I, we'll have to deal with that. Right. The current one, the current description, except in the R1 district, we still have problems in the R1 district that have to be cleaned up because the description there does not meet the current map. And so that's what we're going to be attacking this winter is that is the R districts, the residential and the and the. Uh, and the uh, Getting past the judge. Yeah. Good you know, ways of, of, uh, of driving. Yes, we can. Are, did I understand you correctly to say that uh, sections one through four are in pretty good shape, but as of five, it is. I've got formatting problems on section five. Yeah, well, it's, it's not all there. And the five, list is there, but all the stuff is there. Five of or just five? No, just five. Oh, okay. If you go to six, you'll see immediately how the new format is already working. Because it, what six has, it has the existing four resi uh, three residential zones, R1, R2, and R3. Mm -hmm. And those are in their separate format, just like they were for all business districts. They're the same format with the same tables in. Okay? So that makes it easy. The only thing it doesn't have is the signage. And, and uh, there's a few things in there we can add as we go through there. So what? It, right now, it shows exactly what it, it took all that chart that we had. Remember the big huge chart? And I took all the I, all the uses in that chart and, and enumerated them on the on the uh, on the sheets. So did, were you saying earlier that we're going to um, try to clean up the, the formatting first before making any major changes? I think I think we should have the format completely cleaned up before yeah. we make any changes to the other districts. So what we're going to do is work on just only if we start getting into um, the way it should be or correcting things. We can start the way it should be. We, we we have to just stick with what it is and put it into this format without any corrections or even if we know it's probably wrong. You can put in some minor ones. I put in some minor ones. You'll see some cross outs and some underlines. Because not everything is going to completely resolve. You'll notice if, if you look at, like, say, section four, uh, you'll see where I have some cross outs in section four on. I don't know if I have one else. But um, let's see. 33, page 33. Yeah, see at the bottom there? These, these are some of the, what, the landmine ones. And you'll see down below. I've got some cross-outs because they're not really relevant anymore. Those were relevant to the table. Those so were footnotes in the table. We don't have the table anymore. We have those standards in the individual sections. Here's, here's my concern that we have to be careful about if we have too many of those, people might think we're trying to slide some changes in. Too many cross-outs? Um, cross-outs cross are too bad. Yeah. Okay. But cross-outs still Crossouts, hey, the, the less words we keep in there, the better. But cr every crossout means it's going to be something different. So um, we have to be careful to to the town meeting. You know? What I think we'll do this time, what I what I hope to do, is keep the table. We've done this yeah, before. That would be keep good. the table. It says why. You know, it has the citation of where it is. It says, shows the crossout and it says why it's crossed. That would help. Because it could be questioned in any one of these things. Because the cross is a change. It's a change. Yeah. And, and what it would say is, this is addressed in other sections. It's repetitive yeah. here. This is a footnote to the table which we no longer carry. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and there, are foot, there, there, there are footnotes. Many of the footnotes in that table are now in section 4.4, yeah. for instance, right there. You'll recognize them when you go through there. Um, we couldn't get rid of them without making some substantial change to the ordinance. Uh, and we have to put them somewhere. And so, you know, they're, they're not underlined because they're not new. They're just in a different place. That's all. So, 
Well, no. there's a lot of format issues in there. Um, I have a little teeny thing you can correct if you want. To. I was counting right there. Well, yeah, you know, he, 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 I have huge things in there I have to correct. So, I know, but, but this is one that they they they'll come back, come back and they'll say, oh, he doesn't need to know his own. <laughs> um, section 6? Section 6, yeah. Yeah, number 17, peer dot fourth goes after. Number 17. Comes before R, T before R. You got an alphabetical? I have an alphabetical? I have a spelling error? No, you have it out of order. Number 17. 17 goes after 14. <laughs> on, wow. on, on 6 1 or 6? On uh, page 63. 6 1 1. Number 17 yeah. is peer. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. After. Oh, that's alphabetically incorrect. Correct. Yes. Uh, I just happened to be, be, I I just just happen to be looking well. at that when you said they're in alphabetical order. <laughs> and I said, no, they're not. And then I said, oh, well, I'm a rest star. You see, and this is this is going to be a detailed thing that, um, that you, you might find tedious, but I think it's really essential. Oh, so do I. I think we want to have something nice and clean that everybody understands. And I know this board is really good at doing this, so I'm counting on you to tear it apart and find all the errors, and there will, there will be considerable well, it. I would suggest <coughs> we take this in a couple of steps. And instead of trying to swallow the whole thing for next meeting, right. how about we decide that we're going to look at you know, sections one through four, one through five, and then, you know, everybody read through it and, you know, come back with corrections or suggestions the, rather than do the whole thing, but that's not an awful lot to do. Yeah, if we're going, if, if we're going to do that, then you're saying you're going to do a table of what these cross out mean, I'd be asking where is this yet? I mean, that would be my comment. This is struck out, okay, but this is important. Right. It was important, where is it now? I mean, you gave a wonderful answer, right. but if I review, I'd say, okay, where is it? Yeah, I want to know it. Take me two hours to do right. it, you know where you put it. Right, okay. But if you have a little note, so someone can easily find that. Yeah. Yeah. And one minute is the same note that. that we'll want to give to the town, and then if it wasn't yeah. quite clear, it didn't go right there, or we found it somewhere else yeah. as well, we can add to the note. <coughs> yeah. Maybe it feels straightforward to do because it, this is the layout of, of the whole thing. So right. I'm assuming you guys still want to do this. I think oh. we're committed to it. <laughs> as if, uh, I hope so. <laughs> but we, yeah, we, can do, we, can, we don't have to. No, I it, think it looks uh, like a good format. It's, it's, I, I'm already finding it easier to find things. So, uh, how far do you want to take it? You want to go one through four, one through five? I one think through, we go through one through four because he says five is full of landmines. Yeah. yeah and okay. Let's take it. Before it, before it'll give me a chance to fix it. And with the definitions, we we have to go yeah. all the, the, well, the definition. One. I'll tell you honestly, the definitions are cut and paste. That was yeah. an easy one. Yeah, but we, we don't need to correct language at this point. No. We, we're just looking at format. We're looking right. at no, format yeah. and making sure, the other thing is, I mean, I wish I could have a roadmap, but maybe I, maybe I could start developing a roadmap. Of, of, it's not necessarily always where you delete something, but where you took this and put it, where'd you take this? Right. Where's this go? Where yeah, go? that would be because there is, there. Yeah. This is going to look like the back of an oriental rug. Because we're, we're throwing things all over the place here because they Changing the format and trying to get it into nice cubby holes now, whereas it's got a loose flying around going to pick up sticks. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try it. And it's going to change again. Right now we put it. it. Right yeah. now we put it here so that it doesn't get lost. We felt it was important as we refine this thing. It may end up somewhere else. Right. Okay. All right. So we'll, you guys will work on one through four. I will work on getting five. Getting that dealing with that monster five. And, and the other one I have to deal with is, is the conditional uses. So I'll work on those two things. I'll, I'll be sure I'll have five done so the next time we have five, we can go five, six, and seven. I feel very good about seven okay. and eight. We aren't with, there yet. Yeah, I know. Uh, I guess, I want, I guess I, want to, I want to jump ahead, and, and this is what I do. You, know, I, you can slap me down. But I'd also like you to take a look so we don't have to format it later at 
I broke up the business districts into two different categories. I have straight business districts and I have mixed use districts. Now they're all mixed use districts, but some are more intense business districts than others. You get more complicated because I thought you wanted to change it to BB1 and BB2. I did too. Now you want to change the names again. Oh, no, I, no, I don't want to change the names. No, I'm not changing the names. I'm just changing what, what, what how section they're, they're in. How they're grouped. How they're grouped. For instance, I got down DB1, DB2, BI, and uh, the Alfred Road business districts as business districts. Then I've got as mixed use districts, Gateway, Townhouse Corner, Rural Conservation District, because everybody thinks that's a residential district. It's not, it's a mixed use district. And Natural Resource Conservation District, which is really residential. I have no idea where to put that. Um, maybe we'll put that in residential. Overlay? It's not an overlay, it's a standalone district. You may want to get a comp, comp plan committee the only thing eliminating it completely, I would agree. Um, but we've got it right now. We've got to put it somewhere. Until we eliminate it, we've got to put it somewhere. Why is well, it? Is, if it isn't residential, we can't put it in residential. If it is, where's the majority of it? That's all over. It's in every district. It, it, it's, it's sort of like a little, it's a tiny little district. Well, it's not a tiny district. It's a district that's specifically meant to, to reduce development pressure. It's got a 10% coverage requirement. It's only three acres, so it's no different than the R4 district. It just has look. It has bigger, bigger setbacks and a, and a lower uh, coverage, 10% coverage. So that's the only thing that's really different about it. It's, and and the thing is, we've got it. It overlays a lot of our RP districts, which is frankly non sequitur because why would you put a, a building district in a district you can't build it? If it overlays an RP district, it shouldn't be there. And an RP is, remember, resource protection, and that's no build to the whole 250-foot setback. No build. So, and, and we had the biggest example of that is Brimstone Pond. It, that's, that's the biggest NRC district. If you look at our, our, our old zoning map, that was that big blue, blue ball, blob out, you know, on Irving Road, above Irving, Irving Road, and it said that was a residential, well, that was a uh, limited residential district, but it's all RP. You never can build it, so that's a, it's not an appropriate district for that. Okay. And same thing along the river, where there's floodplains, we have NRC. You can't build that. And that that's an RP design. So. Question to uh, we just say in Brimstone Pond, yep. where we were just playing by customers' request of routing it or zoning it for uh, determining as property lines or evaluation of use of property. That's where I'm trying to get at. But if there's no building there, how can he? Well, in, in that, this you see is where I'm going at. Yes, I do. That was the old map. And that's why he did all that work, was because that was all RP. That was all resource protection. He couldn't do anything there. And he disputed that designation. You gentlemen looked at that. He, had, he spent a lot of money getting both surveyors and um, he, he had that the wetlands delineation map. I went out there twice. Jim went out there with me once. And I confirmed those, I, I agreed with those designations. So he had a nice little chunk of R4 in there that he actually could use, and it met the standard. But that was a site-specific thing that, um, that was, was evaluated at. Okay, was evaluated at. I'm not sure we're going to do that in the future all the time, because I may have that, to disagree with my attorney on that. A smaller scale, I'm not going to change this up. But that isn't, that's not that's to the town's point. expense. No, that was the that's the that's, that's what I'm the saying. That's owner's expense. Yes. Yeah. I'm curious why Alfred Road uh, District is is not in the mixed use. I thought it was more part of it. Part of it. Yeah. Well, it's it's the way we were looking at. It. Well, we were looking at it, but you never divided it into two districts. We didn't divide it, right. which makes it mixed. Which makes right. it mixed. It is mixed use. Well, you want to make it well. Then we should drop the name business district. But we can't. <laughs> Well, but these are the kinds of things we're going to discuss yeah. when we get there. Yeah, yeah we'll discuss that. I mean, grouping it, yeah, we can rearrange the grouping any way you want to. This is my, this is my proposal. Think about it. And maybe, you know, if, if you want to make some changes, 
when we when we get to it, you'll be prepped to, to, to get some good thought on whether we should shift it over here. Or but over. that's the nice part about this format to move it into another yeah. category. Just pick it right up. Change it's it. very easy yeah. to do. Right. The, uh, can, I, can we go back to this resource protection and natural conservation just for a minute? Yeah, sure. Part of our NC overlays the resource protection or does resource protection overlay <coughs> the natural conservation? And there's a big difference there. Well, see, I, I have always technically from a practical standpoint, RP is a, is a standalone district. It's called an overlay, but it isn't. It's a standalone district. Whenever the RP falls, and you can do nothing. It doesn't that, overlay. Whatever's and, happening underneath doesn't and that that is, and, stay and, 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 see, I agree with that. that that's, what, that's where I was going. The RP should be a standalone district. Natural conservation, whatever is determined by whoever, can't overlay. The way, nothing should be overlaying exactly. whatever is determined that so immediately we ought to be able to take out anywhere that it is yeah. overlaying. Yes. Delete the conflicts. You should delete the conflicts. We won't be doing it and there, we won't be doing it in this phase of playing with this. We'll be doing it in when we start working on yeah, but I'm, yeah, during the winter. winter. Just as we're as we're reading and thinking about yeah. it, see how easy because then we'll have such a little my thought is, well, probably say, hell, we need that. <laughs> you know, once we you don't. move that out, there will be very little. So getting, I think you had said that the conflict committee was looking at maybe doing away with that. See, they've already me, reduced that would be a great its importance. Idea. They've reduced its significance. Um, they haven't done away with it yet. The resource We're going to start meeting next month, and I think that's one of the issues that we should decide on. And really take a close look at it. Yeah. If, if they need something conserved and it can't fall into the RP, okay, you can't do it. Extend the RP, I'm fine with that. Yeah. But why have, why have this other thing? Yeah. Well, I, th I think of the original intent of it was to put in more stringent standards in areas where you have important resources and basically reduce development pressure on those resources. But it really doesn't it doesn't do that. that. Yeah, right. Um, it's <laughs> a great concept, but it doesn't into that. really do that. Big part? Golf Mill Brook fall into no, that. No, Golf Mill Brook is in a, a shoreline overlay district. That is an overlay. That's an overlay, and we have two different setbacks, which I don't quite understand. I think we'll be, but we'll we'll be looking look, at but, shoreline zoning, too, because they changed it. We can, we can modify that. But, but on that basis, where we had adopted, we had our own set of standards, but then, but, but then, then we agree that we would follow the state standards, so that's where you may have turned around two different. Yeah, you're right. Right, and, and and we and the standards have come down, and you know we have talked about taking a look at Shirley and Overlay to make it conform to the state standards, because ours is more stringent than the state. That's standards. where you have your different. Yeah, yeah, that's where the motion. Yeah, okay, I thought so I brought that up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Shoreland Overlay District that we have, you'll see that. Rather than put it in various sections, I just gave it its own section. Let's not fool around. It's Shoreline District. It's mean, Shoreline Zone District. It's got its own section. And everything is all in that one section. Question. So you pulled out nonconformity, which was in, in the nonconformity section. Pulled that out of Shoreline Zone. I made mean, a little reference in there. There's an addition, a reference that C section 10. You know, 10 4. Under you know, sure. Shoreline Zone. Yeah. In, just in my thought and theory. Okay, that's basically to do with water. I'm going to use that as... Yeah, okay. it's, it's essentially water. Okay. One of the, the big to-do that we just sort of went and danced around with and everything else about this dam. Yeah. Wasn't that in Shoreland Zone? Yes, it was. That was a Shoreland Zone permit that you granted them. I'm just thinking and you know, quite frankly, you know, and, and this is something you know, I, I don't get way out on this. I pulled it out of the. I, I pulled it out. Not you. That's it. true, but you know, I, I think when we look at trolling zoning, we, we may want to come up with some standards for making the rules, because there is no standard in the state, in the state uh, um, chapter 11, uh, chapter one thousand, 
you know, we have we have approval standards for site land. We have approval standards for conditional use. We don't have any approval standards for shoreline zoning. By what standard are we approving this? Conformance with the performance standards? Well, yeah. it's an overlay zone that goes to the underlying zone. Well, we, we approved it by conditional use. We used our conditional use standards, yeah. our, 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 our eight standards there. But they really were, those weren't really geared towards shorelines, towards an well, environmental and issue. And all of our development. And that thing when we're reading, can we do something to, and I, I know we're not there yet, but our whole everything, the application process, the review process, everything in here toward construction of buildings. Yeah, it is. You know, there's a lot of other activities that goes on with, with, part, with the parking lot. That's a good, great example. Yeah. You know, we don't, we, you know, or tearing down a dam. You know, I, there's a lot of things. Those, we don't have standards for no, we don't. anything else other than really yeah. Well, I'm going to try to rein this in uh, just so um, this, this is this will be a lot of work. Yeah. But do we have uh, what type of deadline? You said we want to have a special meeting? Or we... I think we want to try to get this done. Before, you know, I'd like to try to get this done before the winter. I, I think we could do it. If we could yeah. plug away, yeah. we have, if we plug away, away yeah. well, we have something like the school. I imagine in three weeks. That, that's going to take up the bulk yeah. of that move. We have that, four subdivisions in the major school. So this will keep course. getting bumped to the end of the meeting. So well, not if we set ourselves assignments like that. Or we just make sure it gets done for the next meeting. Right. Well, that. But well, the other if, thing if is, only, if only it would work that way. Already, we're, we're going around. Yeah, but, and you're right. But we're, we're dealing with changes. No, we're not really change. dealing with changes. That's, that's just leadership. The other, the other well, thing that's is. That's why I'm saying let's find a deadline. And, and the other thing is. To it. Number. Right. No, one thing is. Huh? If we do a section. If we do a section and we have a minority a number of people, we don't go back two meetings later because we have seven or six and a half. Or whatever, and start changing it all over. Once you do it, you do well. Yeah, I would. That's uh, a very good point. I would. I would also suggest that either our chair or our planner um, send an email to the members who aren't here, making them aware of the fact that we're doing this, and also asking them to pick one up and be prepared for the next meeting. Yeah, as well as the MLD, the right. big package. Right. I mean, I hate to here. walk in cold and, and have to make decisions on that. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll probably take the approach of page by page, just going through the things that's sort of all this. Well, yeah, yeah, but you yeah. want to have read it and have yeah. sort of by context. context. Yeah. And get your okay. get your yellow pen. Right. Yeah. And get your yellow highlighter out and just start highlighting things that as you as you read through it. Yeah, it's not making any changes. It, it's just correct and maybe correcting, you know, and maybe plugging in a couple, a couple of phrases where something doesn't work. Yeah. Organization or or some organization or conflicts, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Right. But there's no there's no substantive changes right. to yeah, that'll help us go forward. You, you should yeah. be able to do a full out faster on that. Yeah. And there may be a few things in here we can't plug in anymore. There's always a yeah. Um, we'll, we'll probably have that horrible feeling of there we are we are we finally got it together on this couple well, of one chapter this couple of nuts and a screw on the ground in the spring one chapter when we did everything else yeah that's well right. then you present everything except for nut and screw and do your best to get it back in there <laughs> <laughs> right. we'll work with that that we didn't need that nut and screw anyway so let's let's move on with the uh yeah so you you handed out that um letter from KKW? Yeah, from Northern Miami is the super of KKW. I had, uh, Marty had asked me to pursue this and it had been a, a needle in the haystack trying to find it. Um, a lot of the files on this just didn't exist. And I had heard it from the fire department and Marty had suggested why don't you call up KKW and see if, what they've got. And Norm Lab, he's got a great memory. So he, uh, he fired off this email to me on Wednesday and uh, uh, that's pretty much the answer that we were concerned about. Since we don't have one, um, basically said, yeah, they put in the stuff. Uh, they, they put in their connections, but nobody took advantage of it. And that's in a and that 
if I read all of this right, that was in addition to the stub, the, the stubs every thousand feet. Right. In place. Yeah. They're already there. They're, They're there. already there. They're there. And this is 35 years. And how many times have we tried to fight, tried to get a fire hydrant in? Knowing, knowing this, if a big building goes in, they, they need to put one in at the closest hub. Right. Yeah. And then the town needs to, I, I don't, you know, yeah. that would be my position to go to the selection for this thing. You know, if we're going to attract business, that's fine. There's a little bit of cost to get it going. But then the town needs to assume that cost going on. It's a thousand dollars a year after it's, it's in. It's a public safety year. issue. Exactly. Yeah. And we should, and we shouldn't be put in the position of every time trying to convince somebody to do that. We ought to be able to do it as a matter of course. Make sure that right. that's our role. That that that's our role. <coughs> the welfare and safety of the townspeople in, in reviewing this stuff. So I would suggest. That, I mean, you guys read how you interpreted all this. But if there are stubs every thousand feet, if there is a new major build, I mean, if it's a Residents, obviously, we're not going to ask them to put in the fire Oh, well, stop. But well, we did ask somebody already, okay, to extend the fire the water main, okay? I'm not trying to cut you up, but we turn on. We did make somebody extend the water main terrio on Long Cabin Road. Because it was coming down, uh, it was coming down from that... Development, well, but that was the subdivision. Had, and he had an option, I believe, of cisterns. Uh, or cistern or no, I'm talking about we did it at Long Cabin. Uh, it's not old post from us. Oh, it's not time to drive. Uh, his son developing? No, his son. No, 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 no. If that wasn't a single residence, though. Okay, but let's focus on Route 1. Which, yeah, which is where it we was resident. Right. Yeah, um, but multiple residences. It wasn't one yeah. house. Subdivision. We I mean, have to define have what that threshold is. Yeah. Because three if someone just and put numbers. Yeah. We had three lots and there were two places. Or two of them were two places. That is yeah. on all post road. No, that's on that's on, on where his house is. No, that's log cabin. That's what I'm saying is we made him extend the right. water line on the down line. on log cabin. Right. Well, you know, this is this is where we have but a that's that's that, thresh that's that threshold, like Tom just yeah. said, where, hey, at this level, and, and that could be in conjunction with the fire chief, at this level, we, can, we need to make sure that that fire is there. Yeah. Hence the fire protection section in the performance. Yeah, yeah. So, so we can... But as, as far as the look at that immediate problem, we did actually get some very useful information out of that. The Absolutely. That we know that there's a stub every thousand feet is, is tremendously useful and valuable. And now we can plan around that. You're, you have the mapping to those, right? I'm, I'm going to ask him tomorrow if I can get the GIS right. map so, in the disk. So that's I, invaluable. I have a question about this, though. Um, so, cold construction, they, they, they paid for, uh, for that extension. But for what? For a line. That's a line that was never used, right? So what for them to do that? Why do we make them do that? No, I don't we know. We didn't make no, them no, do no, it. No. They did it on their own. No. They did do it on their own because I can't find any record. On, oh, I, I, and I admit point. that the records are bad, but they, I can't find any record. Well, Marty verified that, that. They, they did, did it on they their own. They did it on their own. And there's no record that Tom made them do it. And they never had a I know, but my point was, one of the questions was, we knew that that stuff was there. We didn't know about all these other ones. Yeah. What I would suggest is, we don't do anything about that stuff, but go to the near, go to the nearest stuff that is there along these thousand feet, and, and get a fire hydrant in one of them, whichever one is the closest. Yeah. The re reason why this part of this, connected. well, part of this all is, okay, particularly down on that particular end of the town, all right? When that was usually in what we'll call the dead part of the business district, all right? And since the last several years, all right, the, the DM fire or whatever else not, okay, that we've had different businesses come down along DMR Drive and along Route 1, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we've had Southern Maine Marine, even though they got burnt out years ago, they have come back and put multi hundreds of thousands of dollars there. Okay, a good tax base for the town or anything else. You've got Gary Martins, which is right next to him. Okay. You have, D, you have coal construction going down uh, uh, DMR Road. You, have, you also have Galway Trucking back there. You also have another building back there, okay, that you still have DMR in itself. On all that basis, okay, turn on for the business purpose, and if we're business friendly or anything else per se, there should be some kind of better fire protection there yeah. instead of running 1,700 feet or anything else. Yeah, I think for, for the tax that, that we're gaining, revenue we're gaining from those businesses, the cost of a hydrant is, is peanuts. But it also, too, gives it... Because if they were to burn down, we lose, they, they lose the building, we lose the tax pay. Not just about tax, I no, think we're it's also viable. protecting... Uh, uh, people's property as well. Like the property. well yeah. I do have a question though about that extension. Because who actually owns that? Is because the they pay for it. Coal right? put it coal in. You see, that's the problem. So if we use that extension to put in a hydrant, there's, I, I, it seems like there's an ownership issue. Well, now, let, 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 me, let, me, hey, hey, let, me, let me come back along this way also, okay? Along Route 1, before we had the new pumping station, okay? Water pressure anywhere along there, okay? Close to zero. Yes. With the new pumping station and everything else, we have 40 to 60 pounds of pressure constant, okay? But the fact is, coal construction put that in, that water line in, okay? And so they would have also water to his building, okay? And his building is located quite a ways back, all right? And like I said, the water pressures were so low that we used to turn on, there's several businesses along there, there and other places, okay? Would turn on and put in additional pumping station just to try to draw the water because they couldn't even run a steam cleaner because they would turn out and burn, burn the pumps out because there wasn't enough water pressure. But That's why but, many times you went to a larger line. But Coles is not using that for their domestic water. Yes, they are. They are. It doesn't sound like it from this. Yeah. It sounds like from this it's exclusively for a firefighter. No, he also is tapped in because he also has radiant heat and everything else in that. You know, would, I think it would be nice for us to, um, and he's saying it's every thousand feet, but yeah, let's we have to point out where, where they are. I'm going to request that uh, John's suggestion is his suggestion. I'm going to request to uh, you get a uh, copy of that map. I have the copies of, of, of the, the, the general. Um, distribution system, but not the specifics for the okay. And I know the guy down there is the GIS guy down there, and, and we're going to talk to him about it. He's always said that you yes, need, need let me know. Okay, I need something. Yeah. So. See, I don't even disagree with what the, what, what the town did. It said, you know, for 35 years we didn't want to pay for hydrant and to pay $1,000 each without having any businesses down there. Right? That, that's a good fiscal decision in the back. But now we have a lot of businesses in the area, a lot of buildings, and we need to get a hydrant in that area. Yeah. But again, I know you don't like that, Marty, but it's, I think what should be done is go, if we have a marked out a thousand feet all the way down Route 1, and there's stubs and D's there, that ought to, that, I mean, we can make the regulation and the fire safety and protect them pretty simple. They put it in, they're responsible for paying for the hydrant, maintenance for three years after that, the time takes over. That's it, been all, the old policy has always been. Yeah, right. no, but we can make it as part of the condition and make a recommendation to the 
selectmen that th that well, this is something the town manager needs. Let's give the selectmen what we're doing. It. The selectmen a yeah. chance to respond to some of this. You can't end up here. Let me just ask a couple of questions here. So when I read this, the cost of installing the hydrant is no cost to the town. Right. It's just a thousand dollar yearly charge, right? So after three, that right? Yeah, after after three years, I think. No. Yeah, that's not what this says. It says the capital cost of the hydrant installation formed by the district. The current annual charge of community for a public fire hydrant is 998.52. That's all it says. Right. Usually and the way we've done it is that the, the planning board puts that responsibility on to the, the person who's putting it in since they don't have to pay for it. They pick up the cost for three years. Or, the, or, 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 the, or half the cost. Near, near this uh, yeah, it's a negotiable thing. But yeah, yeah. it's really the, the, the town's not buying the hydrant, nor is the developer. You know, the, the district's putting in the hydrant. It's their hydrant. It's not, it's not really an ownership issue because we don't own the hydrant. You know, uh, the district owns the hydrant. When the hydrant goes, they replace the hydrant. If it needs maintenance, they replace the hydrant. Uh, or they fix the hydrant. So it's basically a rental that we do on it. And what historically the town has done is made the developer pay for the pay that $900 fee for three but, years and then the town. No, but that's not in our ordinance, no. though, right? That's but uh, but I, I remember correctly, okay. it, it was instead of, the, instead of the $900, they would pay five hundred fifty dollars for the first three years because that was more than half of uh, that's that's, that's, that's that's what it was that's because we went that's through that. that. We'll, we'll break that up. Right? But I mean that you know that's a good point, but really that should be in the ordinance. Yeah, yeah. 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 so it's cut dry, it's clear, and we know, and we don't have to go back and think and absolutely. Yeah. Man, remember, Dan, remember when we went with uh, Phil Genevieve's, how he fought, fought, fought about the hydrogen, and there was, but, but the other thing is, we never did bring it across the street Yeah. on, on that drive. So, so DMR, is that, is that where Rumble Tool is? That, what's up uh, there? No, no. But if there's stubs, stuff, it's probably 30,000 feet. It's, it's down from, the, it's on the side of here. It's, it's almost, D, DMNR, okay, let me give you an example where it is. Do you know where they says the Arundel storage, that small little place? Do uh, you know where the car, the yep. new car place is? Yeah. Okay, car place is across the street. Coming up, there's a couple houses that are swamp. There is Arundel storage right there. Dirt road going down. Then you have Gary Martin's there. And then the next place up is uh, the uh, Southern Main Marine. And DMR goes straight and through the DMNR, road. And the DMNR road that was put in, okay, by DMNR then, was to help to remove the boats that they used to build over on the old post road, okay? But they could, they could not bring up the 65-foot boats or anything else out of the shed where they built them because they were all fiberglass. They could not bring them down along Old Post Road, or they could not come and cut the corner at the trying at the very tip. So he built his own road, DM&R, at the is, time. Is that a dirt road, or is that a dirt road. road? Okay, all right, all right, yeah, yeah. Okay. But they built that well, road so that way right. so they could bring it down Route 1. Yeah, okay. and there's a stop right there. This, this is what we're, Here this is right. what, where it all came about. One day I was talking to Mr. Cole. Okay, he come down to the shop, and Bob was there that day too. And he said he had paid for a stub. For, and he had supposedly said he had paid for a stub for three years, and their stub never got put in. Okay, and the fact is why it wasn't put in, or afterwards, is because. Uh, one of our former town managers refused to pay for it. But they, okay. And that's why to this day there is never one there, because it was swept under the carpet, more or less. And I'm saying for fire safety or anything else. So who should make the decision on the town manager? Or is it? Or selectmen have to decide any budgetary issue. 
Yeah. So However, if, if if you have it as a as a uh, code requirement, yeah, it's a commitment. You know, that, that is something that that obviously we would need to uh, to have a, a discussion with the selectman right. about. Do you yeah. want to make that kind of commitment? Yeah. Uh, and we, we've we've needed to develop we fire have protection that, that kind of commitment. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we started doing it, but we, we really haven't. We've been focusing on the zoning areas, not dealing with that, that whole issue. Well, we've been we dealing we with them individually and trying to make sure they got the right protection. So, yeah, it's it's a mess. Well, we had no idea that we're stuck all the way down there. So that that needs to be another thing that we we'll work on the fire in the future. In the future. Yeah. In the future. Right. That's why I have that in there as a, as a yeah. reserve section. May I ask a question? Sure. Okay. Since we have all that new construction down that way. I think before the winter, if there is a fire stub there, the fire hydrant should be put there. That's something you're going to have. I'm no. asking, I, no, I'm just saying is, I'm saying that would be a petition to something for that. I would have to say, unless unless okay. the property owners down there want to chip in and, and get it started. They, uh, yeah, they've, they've already paid country. for the stub. And, man, man, and have, well, you know, well that's, according that's, to this, you know, they never, they the old construction never stuff. paid for a stop. They didn't pay for yeah. a stop. They did not pay for a stop. But, pay. again, installation of a fire hydrant is at the district's cost. Right. The only cost would be the $1,000, and, right. you know, that would have to be as, you know, do we have that in our budget, or do we have to wait until, until the next budget round to make sure that we can, you know, budget that $1,000? Right. Right. And then if we start in four or five of them, that's... If we decide we need one, okay, it's going to be as part of a construction that's going to come out, it's going to go into the next year. As those things are approved, somehow they need to be aware that we've added a fire hydrant. Well, yeah, I think the selectmen could probably set up or the town manager, just like they have the fund for the fire trucks or a revolving fund, you know that. Capital kind of fund. Capital do the same kind of thing, <coughs> so it isn't a budgetary shock. But uh, you know, we'll let Keith handle it how he feels best. I mean, right. That's, but that, that that's kind of thing role. can be done if you plan for it. Right. But to Marty's point, here we do have a lot of business. We do have stuff down there. There ought to be one put in. Well, we have to work on that. Yeah. So let's get past the formatting. And uh, get on, get on. I mean, that's one of the performance things we have to attack. Uh, I think before we did drag it out in formatting, we asked the town manager and the selectmen before the winter to find out about that fire. Can they afford one? That's what I'm about And they're only paid by monthly. Right. So, I mean, it's not like. Make a motion. It's a valid request. It's like a hundred dollars. Yeah. Make a motion. I make a motion to turn we find out ASAP to have a fire hydrant put in request the selectman. Request the selectman to put in a fire hydrant at DMR? No. Well, near the... Near well, on Route 1 right yeah. there. Wherever the We're nearest... We're going on Route 1 right there. Wherever the nearest real stub is every thousand feet, because if right. you start you start doing other stubs, then Somebody's going to be short. Sure. Well, up. there's, there's yeah. lots of stuff. So the question is, which where do you want it to go? And the M &R road. The closest one to the M &R road. Right. Got it. That way, any further development should. Are you seconding that? I'm seconding. Okay. Any second. okay. other Martin? discussion on? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Well, we'll get that letter off uh, tomorrow. So thank you. Because. Like I said, and also along that lines, under fire protection, I wanted like to have it included. Okay, the fact is, like for example, how I've suggested, like the Bentley's campground or anything else, when you're extending, not along Route One, but if you're going more than a thousand feet or anything else, fire hydrant still has to be, even if a line's not late. Yeah, you're responsible. Or something in. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, when we get to fire protection, let's really that we that we can delay. We, we get to that. that yeah, when we play with that, we need to hit it. But yeah, yeah. that's that's reasonable. Uh, other towns do that. Yes, they do. They right. do. Okay. Actually, so they require 500. All right, I'm gonna have us move on to planners' report. There's one.
Yes. Uh, I got a couple of my letters to sign. We could sign them after we close. But uh, we have to do it during the meeting. No. I thought we did. Signing, we don't have to. That way we could uh, chew the fact. Did you well, want to do it with your four member? I didn't mean to. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the only question. I mean, well, we ask, once champagne, we're going to ask him that. I just don't like to chew up on the timer. Okay. Um, Planner's report, let's see. I got off the uh, Portland Press Herald now is going to be doing a story about uh, our seasonal cottages. I got off the phone with them. They're doing a spread on that. I don't know if it's a weekend spread or something. But doing a good job with PR. Uh, they are doing really excellent. Kim's really pushing the PR, and uh, they're still pushing pretty hard up there, as you can tell. We've had another drawdown meeting. Uh, they've gotten a lot of landscaping done. Paper. They've gotten, what, four or five units up now? Um, still don't have the um, Joe, if you're watching, I'm waiting for the condo docs. You're not going anywhere without those. Well, I, I hear they're done. So do I, but I just <laughs> can't read them. <laughs> not allowed to read them. Um, well, apparently Kim's been binding them. Has she? Pretty sore. Yeah. Oh, good. So. I, don't need, I don't need 100, I only need 8, 9. One for each of you guys. Actually, actually, I mean, you can't do it. The bigger question is, I mean, it goes to the town attorney because that was the that was the findings of fact was that the town attorney's got to review it. So you know, you've already made your decision. Yeah, so it's one really thing that, that I, I don't even know. But personally speaking, I I won't be able to make any judgment of it. I think it should go to the town attorney, and I don't even have to look at it. Well, it actually, it's, it was yeah, it's supposed to be the town attorney. So I give it to her and I read it too. Well, two of us all read it and we'll look at the key. I mean, you know, it's, there'll, there'll, there'll be some different standards in there uh, from the usual because this, they're doing things differently there. You know, there'll be the, the, the uh, golf cart issue and a number of other things with the separate little storage sheds, you know, sheds and stuff and, you know, parking and, and various things. But, um, uh, you know, the, the key issues are, you know, what time of occupancy, you know, uh, no registration of kids in school, that kind of stuff. All, all those things have to be in there. And, uh, and the usual protections for the association. By the way, they have their hydrants up there. But uh, they're paying for their own hydrants. No, I, I know they are. I go, I go past the seasonal resorts in, in Wells, and here it is late September, and I've seen it right into October. And his kids waiting for the school bus at that seasonal uh, cottage resort there. And I know they have similar rules to us, but so somehow it is because if someone's living there and they got a kid, you have to put them in school. So, but I, I don't know if we'll have the same issue here. Or not. No. Well, we can't have that issue. We can yeah. two two different problems. Number one, I mean, the voters said absolutely not. The ordinance says absolutely not. And the state of Maine said if you do that, you have to solve that tip. So there's so some penalties there. Yeah. You know, they they don't yank a tip right, right away. Good. And I know they probably don't want that either. But well, well, what yeah. happens if you get a family that does do you that? You can't live there around. You can't 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 no, but I'm saying you, you, could, you're, you're, you could live there through, was it the 1st of December? Yeah, but you can wait through, 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 first of, uh, through the 31st of December. 31st of December. So you're there. that's four months of school. Of, the, of September, October, November, December. You could have your, you could be living there with your kid, and you have to put them in school. So, so you send them to the local school. Yeah, I think that. Well, part of that kind of that should say that they will not. They understand yeah, that they cannot, it, but they can. It, it was it was actually in the tip. That's that only the only children that could be uh, enrolled in school would be the caretakers. That's an unfortunate problem. We'll yeah, we'll, we'll deal with that when it gets there. I'm sure people will try. They'll, They'll try it. Yeah. They'll try it. You know what? If, if it happens to be one or two kids, yeah. in the scheme of things with the tax money, it don't mean jack. Well, that's not yeah. encouraging. Uh, yeah, but one or two, there's the war. Starts to stumble. Yeah, 30, 40, nip it in the butt. But anyway, that's, that's not our Yeah, sure. Well, so, how you going to have so. it? All right, next on the agenda, I, things are slowing down a little bit. I, we do have another item. Um, I have two items to talk to you about. One is uh, I have an existing building on Route 111 that started off as a residence and they want to convert it to commercial. 
it looked like commercial right from the start. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Huh? Anything like that. Um, that will be coming in uh, for your review as a pre-application. Um, I have reviewed it all and got it in my mailbox yesterday. Actually, I think today. Uh, that will be coming up. And then the Motorland, the, uh, I, I'm not sure if I told you folks this. I told the chairman I asked him about this because uh, um, the Griffins are selling Motorland, or selling the property, and they want to sell it to the guys in Motorland. The problem is that they want to divide it. And in order to make their frontage, they have to divide it across the part of the parking lot. So part of the parking lot is going to disappear. Right. Well, it also affects the lights too. And I, and I told them, like, how in the world, if you're if the lot if the lot line goes through the parking lot, you can't make your buffer extend. You can't make it unless you put it in your fence. And they said, well, okay, we're going to put in a fence. And I said, well, what about the lights? The lights are going to be spilling over. Uh, so we've gone through that, and uh, the chairman told me. I don't want you guys doing this. I think it needs to go back to the planning board. Mm -hmm. If they're going to make revisions like that, it needs to go back to the planning board. Um, I would assume that you folks will probably agree with that, but mm -hmm. um, it, it is your, uh, you basically it's government does something. So okay, we're going to get them to come back and talk to us. Uh, the other issue is, of course, the lights are right there. Either, if you turn them off so there's no light spilling over the fence onto the adjacent property, then, then you have a, a dark spot. I mean, if, if you if you turn them on, you have a light spilling on the adjacent property. If you turn them off, then you have a dark. End. Well, you'd have to redo the light. Right. That's expensive light to be dead. Well, it's not our problem. It's an expensive yeah. parking lot. Too. It's a very expensive. Uh, the other thing is too, if you split that land, they're the ones that want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> if you split that land, there is also a private access. No, the back property. Yep. There's a private access to back property. There also happens to be a very big stream that cuts most of that land in half. Correct. Um, so there's there's some real issues there. The other thing is too along that lines, turn out when that property was being divided or being sold, there was underground tanks, and I've never turned out of hers. Yeah, they were removed. They were removed. I just yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the first things we looked at when the Griffins came in. And they were pulled out. You probably don't remember what they were. We so we I'll probably said it. We never got. Well, we, we shouldn't talk about it too much, you know, right. until they're here. Did, did, last week, did you say um, that um, the proposal on Lock Cabin Road that they were maybe pulling back, pulling out of that? You know, the, um, the senior. No. no. Yeah. So, is that still moving forward? I don't know. I, I, I heard They're from someone who's looking, looking at, uh, well, the, 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 okay. some, some of the stuff they have to do is expensive. Right. right. I'm saying they're dragging their feet because there's a lot to be done. And that's where I was going at. There's a lot to be done on that. There's, um, and, uh, and they're selling the house as an outside of that subdivision, which that affects the subdivision. That would be a two-acre lot. That's a two-acre lot. So that affects the subdivision. And they're, they're it's on the market. In fact, I talked to two people about it. In fact, I spent 45 minutes with somebody. Um, so that they're they're still working on that. Uh, I talked to the folks. Um, I should be getting. Um, we'll have we'll have the trolley museum on for the next week. They they did their soil. They went back and remapped that that wetland, and we both did a determination of that tributary that was coming in. It doesn't qualify as uh, a stream for stream protection. So it's uh, not a 100 foot setback, it's just a 50 foot setback. They can work with that. They have to still have to skew it a little bit. Um, so they're preparing their stuff. I talked to them yesterday. Uh, that was an addition, right? Yeah, that's an addition. Yeah. And, and there's, there's no real lights on that. I mean, yeah, you don't have to get any. any no, there's no real, there's, there's no infrastructure that's going on with that. But I do want the chief to come up with something. Uh, I haven't heard from Phil Labby on uh, uh, his subdivision. I've got to remind him, you got six months to get things going here, buddy. You know, uh, I know he's awful busy. So. I know he's busy. It's, it's, well, Paul it's, can it's, come it's, in. Yeah. Paul can do something about that. But I'm going to send him a, a little message about that. And uh, finally, huh? Bob's disappeared, but 
Finally, remember, Tuesday night we have a ZBA defense. Okay? I sent that all to you. And, no, uh, we did send it. When did you send it? Monday is, is Biddeford, isn't it? No. Biddeford Court? No, 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 no. That's October 2nd. October. Oh, October. October 2nd is is that. No, that's our well, appeal. That's, Monday, right? that's our appeal. We that's don't the appeal. Have no, not the Biddeford Court you don't do right. But the, the, uh, because it's not your actions. The code enforcement officers. Uh, but uh, no, this is the uh, the appeal against the planning board decision in August. Yeah, it's a ZBA meeting. So ZBA meeting is Tuesday at seven here. Okay, to be here should be. Fine. The ZBA loves seeing the planning board. It was three years ago. You were in front of them for the uh, roads. Oh no, two oh, two years ago. It was two years ago we were in there for the first session on the Du Bois thing, and then three years ago we were on roads, and four years ago we were there for the, for the uh, golf course. That notification issue. So, so please be there. Yeah, I won't go make it so helpful. I have that down at Witherford, but I guess I got that next Yeah, you got that one. Uh, I told you second. Wow. Tad, where did you send the email out about ZBA Tuesday? I mean, I, if I bring email. You didn't get it? You didn't get it? No, that's why I'm that's why I balked at it. I'll send it off to you tomorrow morning. Okay? I'll send it. Because I didn't know anything about it. I apologize then. I will uh, I will resend it to the planning board. I'll send the, the document and and the notification. It's also on the calendar for it's on the calendar too. Town yeah. website, it's on the calendar. Yeah. You I said, that on there, so. you said earlier that the next meeting is in three weeks, but is it two weeks? Two weeks. Yeah. Okay. The first, wow. we got a lot of work. The to first do. is a Thursday. What? The first is a Thursday. The, the October first is is, th is a Thursday. So two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. So we do meet in two weeks. Uh, three weeks. November is a three weeks. Breather. Remember, in November we usually oh, so end November up only having one meeting. November is in the time we would see that. No. Don't get that three weeks back. back. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, no, I can't think of. Uh, let's see. I got a good question. If I may interrupt on your plans. Sure. It looked like John and the Cage Potter was doing some landscaping. Yes, they have been. They're doing better than what, the, what was proposed. I have gone out to take a look. They haven't called. I went by there Saturday. That's why I'm saying it. Well, I haven't been on. I haven't been on 111. I haven't been on, up on that end of 111 this week. So, just I'll take a look. Probably go there tomorrow. I also have to go look at the uh, at the pond at the uh, dam because that was blown out on Friday, last Friday. I was on vacation. What so pond? The Gulf's Mill Dam was was removed on last Friday. Fortunately, I was not here. So Nobody's talking about Kate's butter. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. You're right down hill there. Okay. So when he's told us when they, because they said they were going to inform us. They informed me, but I was out of time. I thought they were going to take four until next year. That's what. Now they wanted to get it done this year. So I haven't gone to take a look yet, although I want to go look at the screen and that. I think we're all, I we're all interested. What, what, what was that called? That was the Gulf Hill Dam. Dam. It was, they, they cast they, it. They pulled the plug on that on Friday. Uh, Bruce Reed gave me a call to him. So. Anything else? That's it. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 8.30. 8 uh, we turn this out and we'll sign this. Uh, question on signing. We don't have everybody probably, uh, That's true. Uh, My problem.